Hi, I'm Varun Krishna from Phone Arena and here we have Raj Talluri, Senior Vice President of Application Process at uh, Qualcomm Inc. He's heading the Snapdragon team. So hi Raj, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Great to be here. So Snapdragon is a huge line of products for Qualcomm and India is a big part of it. So how critical is India to it? Yeah, you know, um, India, you know, Clearly, um, a large part of the India market is price sensitive. Although there is a segment of, uh, of India that uh, clearly can afford, uh, you know, the higher priced phones, uh, but for that part of the market, um, we are actually working quite hard to uh, to get some of our Snapdragon chipsets into the uh, more affordable phones, the more affordable smartphones. Um, as you can see, with S4, we have different classes of products, and uh, some of the newer products that we've announced recently on S4 um, are going into a lot of, uh, you know, hundred dollars and below smartphones. Uh, we're doing multiple things there. You know, one uh, just uh, integration and getting rid of the, you know, in reducing the cost on the total bill of materials of the phone. And uh, secondly, we are working with, uh, you know, we are developing something called uh, a Qualcomm reference design, which is a, a full uh, bill of materials optimized uh, reference design that uh, our partners are now able to take and make phones. The so time uh, to market would be reduced because of that. I'm sorry. The time to market for devices. Would the be time reduced. to market reduced, and also we uh, we are able to reduce the uh, R and D okay. uh, that uh, our partners need to spend to get the phone out, uh, and also provide them uh, very quick time to market. Really. So, which are the companies which sell Snapdragon powered phones in India? Um, all our all our uh, traditional customers sell phones here. Uh, you know, HTC and uh, you know Samsung and uh, Sony Ericsson and uh, all of them sell here. Also, a lot of uh, Indian manufacturers uh, are now using uh, you know like Micromax and. Uh, you know, Salon and uh, Lava and all these customers also using uh, using our products. So, quite a bit of uh, traction in the India market for, uh, for our phones. So, what do you think makes uh, Snapdragon stand out of the competition? It, I, actually, uh, the simple answer is, uh, you know, we it's a uh, it's a key to Snapdragon success is uh, you know maybe three things. One, uh, great performance you know, that delivers great user experience. Um, then uh, integration because we integrate many many components uh, inside one package or one chipset. So you're able to get that uh, power and uh, performance benefit, and also just a whole uh, footprint uh, inside the phone. And the third one is uh, is we spend a lot of time on uh, optimizing the power, so the battery life. Um, you know, because uh, we always focused on uh, mobile first, and everything we do that gives that power advantage. So performance, power, and integration. You have the HTC One S, which is powered by a Snapdragon chip inside. So, does Snapdragon or Qualcomm play a role in what goes inside the phone in terms of components? Um, we um, we make um, w what we typically do is when we make Snapdragon chipsets, uh, we actually build uh, you know on the high end we build things called uh, uh, mobile development platforms or Snapdragon development platforms, where we choose a bunch of components and we build an experience device, which is a very high end experience device with great cameras and great audio and video where we make sure that uh, you know like a 30 megapixel camera is working with our device and so on um, and so we, we test out you know our display controller for example our touch screen so we get all this is worked out with Snapdragon uh, ahead of time and when HTC is uh, ready to make component selection it's nice for them to know that we've already done the work with many of the hardware component vendors to get the great performance so they have a choice of which ones to use ultimately they make the choice in what they want but we provide a quite a few choices for them of things that work well with Snapdragon. Well, you know, in addition to the three things I mentioned, you know, there's another important reason, uh, you know, that uh, I'll also add to the other three, is that, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a very strong roadmap. So we are able to make uh, processors, you know, Snapdragon chipsets that allow the OEMs to make phones from, uh, you know, $900, $1,000 phones to sub $100 phones in a very software compatible manner. So they're able to take advantage of the uh, R&D and leverage their R&D to, to make phones across the segment. We are kind of unique in that manner. Most of our competition has uh, one or two products at different parts of it, but they don't cover the whole breadth of the smartphone roadmap. So we saw the uh, APQ806 Pole, which is a quad-core uh, reference device at the Bloggers benchmarking session in uh, San Francisco last month. So we saw really good performance numbers on that device. Uh, and now, a couple of months later, you have real devices from several manufacturers. LG is the first uh, one to launch a phone. So you have uh, real devices running on a quad-core great CPU. So do you think the performance numbers would match what we saw in the uh, reference device back then? Oh, um, yeah, it's a very good question. We, we expect them to be very close. Uh, we expect them to be very close uh, because, you know, uh, we, we uh, when, when you guys uh, did the blogger benchmark, those were 
uh, full phone designs. They are actually full tablet designs that, uh, you know, real world applications. So we expect our partner phones to perform uh, similarly. Um, you know, one of the things is actually, I just this morning I saw that uh, the word or one of those things had a, a, you know, the sites had a review of the new LG phone, and I just saw the performance numbers. They look, they look really good. So we hope to, uh, we hope that uh, in the real world use cases, you will see the same kind of products and same kind of performance. So your competition, uh, Nvidia, has five cores in their quad core phone. The fifth core, they say, is for their power uh, management. So. On your Snapdragon uh, S4 Pro, you don't have uh, fifth core, but only four cores. So, uh, do you have uh, a better power management compared to Nvidia? Right. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, Crate is uh, a fundamentally different architecture than uh, than uh, you know the other ARM processors that our competition has chosen. You know, A15 that that's coming from ARM is actually going to be in the Crate class. You know, but A15 is not out, out here yet. So, Crate's got a significant advantage in terms of time to market. And we've really optimized Crate for uh, power performance. So what happens is um, when you use Crate, we are able to run a Crate processor, you know, clock it down very low and clock it up very high, and it actually smoothly moves in the power curve. So you, we don't really need, uh, unlike you know Nvidia who needed another core to manage the power because they couldn't manage the, I guess they couldn't manage the A9s to do that. With Crate, we don't really need another one like that because we can use the same processor from the low end to the high end of the of the performance curve and scale down in the in the power curve. So we're actually very happy with the design. Samsung has their own uh, lineup of chipsets called Exynos, uh, which is very good in terms of performance, uh, competing with Qualcomm Snapdragon. So what do you think about? It? What's your thoughts on that? I think uh, it's a very uh, it's a very good platform and uh, they do a good job. But you know it's a competitive marketplace. We compete with uh, with uh, you know lots of chip vendors. You know Nvidia, you know Intel and Qualcomm. I mean uh, Exynos and then uh, TI. You know ultimately you know Samsung uses uh, whatever product uh, is the best for them at any point of time. And we are quite happy with the way it's been uh, it's been working out with uh, Snapdragon and Samsung. So what's your thoughts about? Uh Apple going with their own uh, custom core for their iPhones and iPads. Yeah, you know, Apple, you know, has a has a is a very different kind of customer because they have a, a total ecosystem that they that they control in terms of uh, you know iTunes and uh, you know and App Store and and the phones. So you know they uh, they design their own uh, processors uh, and uh, it's working for them. So I think it's uh, it's pretty good for them. LTE is the next big thing in terms of technology and it's already. A must-have feature in handsets which are sold in the U.S. and it's all all the phones are mostly powered by Qualcomm. So LTE is still not uh, there in India yet uh, fully. So probably price is the reason. So do you think uh, when do you think would the prices of LTE-based phones uh, be more affordable? Uh, yeah, we are we are actually uh, working quite hard to make uh, very affordable uh, LTE chipsets um, in the in the next year and year after, and we will continue to drive the you know price of the LTE chipsets down. Um, you know, but uh, I think the, it's not just the price of the chipset. I mean, there's still, uh, you know, there's a premium for the ARPU and so on. So I think, uh, you know, it'll take a little longer, but uh, we're absolutely doing our part to get the whole chipset prices down uh, and the integration so that we can deliver affordable LTE handsets. So what's your current phone? Uh, I use a bunch of different phones. Uh, I think here I have HTC One X now, and, uh, you know, I have a Samsung Galaxy S3 and you know, I guess I'll uh, go get the new LG Quad Core phone when I get back to the US. All right, Raj, it was great talking to you. Thanks for your time. Yeah, it was great talking to Thank you. Thank you. My time. pleasure. Yeah.